Welcome back everybody. This is really cool. It's harvest season for lavender, which grows well in climates with warm summers and cool dry winters, including here in Texas. June Bloom Lavender in Johnson City is run by farmer Melissa J. Broughton, who's here to educate us on this gorgeous, lovely smelling perennial herb. Melissa, good morning. Good morning. This is such a cool concept and I know that it comes from an interesting past, right? So can you tell me how you became a lavender farmer? Yes, absolutely. So I actually have always been fascinated with lavender. I absolutely love the color of it, the, the way it smells. But I grew up in Colorado and Wyoming where we really didn't have any lavender. And so when I actually moved somewhere where I saw the fields, I was just fascinated by it. So I started volunteering with another lavender farmer. And that's pretty much how I got started, which was about, I would say 10, 10 years ago. But kind of more in the big picture, um, my dad, I wrote a book about my dad, and so I'm a writer and a lavender farmer, um, and he was an alcoholic. And um, so I have a background in mental health as far as my, my profession and education, um, but also personally. So I'm an adult child of an alcoholic. And so really I got into lavender because it helps with mental health, it helps with self-care, it lowers anxiety, really good for you. So I feel like indirectly he's one of the reasons that I got into being a lavender farmer. Yeah, wow. So it's kind of come from two sources, but it got you here regardless. Yes. Um, and you brought a lot of education for us today. I the did. first is that there are two different types of lavender that are used really often and people may not realize that. They don't. In fact, that's one of the things I love telling my customers when they come in my store and they always leave saying I did not realize that so there are actually generally speaking there are three categories of lavender very generally speaking Spanish English and, and French most lavender farmers will grow French and English so I've got a French here okay and that's a tall guy that I'm kind of used yes. to seeing I'm gonna show on camera like he is a really big dude absolutely <laughs> beautiful yes and what I love, so of course, being a lavender farmer, I love both of these. But when I'm showing my customers, um, as far as the visual, I call this one, like you said, it's long and lean. So I call this the French model. Okay. It's long, it's, it's slender, it's sophisticated, it's beautiful versus the English lavender How is cute. a little more curvy. Um, you know, the, the blooms are a little more pom-pommy. So this one is more of the cheerleader. This is more of the French <laughs> model. They're both beautiful, but different kinds of beauty. Both beautiful in their own ways. Yes. And I will say the blooms on this are more of a blue purple. Yes, that is um, true. Kind of a, almost a brighter color than I was expecting. Absolutely. Even in, even in their dried forms. Okay. And so oh, go ahead. Sorry. Also, I wanted to say with the French and the English is that the English doesn't really smell as much as the French. Uh -huh. So with the, actually what you're smelling in the room is the French. The culinary is special because that's actually what goes into some of the culinary products. So it's not about the aroma. It's more about the palate. In the English type. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you say, um, you know, your farm is actually out in California. You've been harvesting like crazy over the past couple yes. of weeks. And when you talk to people in Johnson City who originally are like, hey, wait a minute, this is California. Yeah. By the time you've <laughs> talked to them, you've got them on board. Yes, I do. And I understand their questions. They want to know where my lavender comes from, where I grow it, how I get it. Um, but I lived in California for 20 years. And so that's where I grew my plants. And that's really where I cultivated them. And they grew. And now they're about 20 years old. Wow. So I didn't want to leave them. Even though I was moving, I didn't want to leave them. And so I actually go back to California once a year. I'm there for a couple of uh, weeks to harvest by hand. And then I bring everything back in a U-Haul truck. So it's, kind of, it's basically California grown and Texas made because I make my products in my store. Gotcha. We've got a Texas gal <laughs> who's doing it Working there in it. Johnson City. Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, and you sh <clears throat> promised me that you'd show us how to debud lavender, yes. which is apparently a part of the process to get us to like these lovely seeds yes. that I think a lot of people would recognize. You got it. Yeah. So I actually, when we're debudding the lavender, the English is a little bit trickier because the, the blooms are hanging on for dear life. <laughs> so when I debud this, I actually have to do uh, stem by stem. Whoa. But what I'm usually debudding is the French because this is gonna be the majority of my products. This one's a lot easier to debud. So once I've harvested, I'm gonna hang this in my store, the barn, um, for a couple of months to make sure it's nice and dry. Even if it looks dry and feels dry, you wanna make sure that it's not flexible at all. Okay. So this one's pretty dry. So the only thing you need to do is just roll it like this. 
So and easy. And it comes right off the stem. And I should say we have a huge bucket back here full <laughs> <laughs> of lavender seeds. But so this is what we're wanting to do. And, and what does the debudding, you know, create for us? Yes. So this is basically going to make most of my products. So what okay. it's going to look like, she mentioned that the, you mentioned the bin. So this is what it looks like. These are the buds. So what's so special about these is that, doesn't that smell good? I was just saying it smells So amazing. every time somebody walks into my store, I'm doing this all day. Mm. So all day I hear, oh my gosh, your store smells so good. But that's why. So the oil is actually in the bud. So that's why things like the sachet last so long because the oil is in the bud. So if I don't squeeze it, it's going to be preserved in the bud for several years. Gotcha. Wow. So that's what's so amazing about lavender as far as how long it lasts. Okay. Unfortunately, we're running out of time quickly. I want to mention culinary line, um, skincare line, because you've got an esthetician background as yes. well. But I cannot stop before we talk about the bunnies real yes. quickly, please. <laughs> So the bunnies are my best so seller. Last year, I think we sold several thousand of the bunnies. They are made out of a minky fabric. So it is not real fur. It's made out of a minky fabric, so it's super soft. They're fidget sensory tools. So most people understand what that is these days, but it's like a stress ball, but better. Inside is gonna be the French lavender buds that we talked about. So when you fidget with it, it stimulates aromatherapy. Absolutely amazing. Now here's the other fun thing about the bunnies. They're all named after real bunnies that I've rescued ah, and adopted. How sweet. So all the rescue stories are on my website. Today we've got June, Milo, and Leo. I hate that we have to leave it here because we could be learning <laughs> about lavender for hours, but such a cool segment. Melissa, thank you for your time. Thank you. Of course. All right, Melissa has over 4,000 freshly harvested lavender bun bundles and dried, I should say as well, up for sale, as well as lavender products. You can learn more about her farm and her business. It's very cool at junebloomlavender.com. Huh.